Hi, gorgeous ones. Yes, I'm back. This is the second video in my series where I am doing some live readings for you. Well, live recorded readings, I suppose, <laughs> of my first book, uh, The Men I've Almost Dated. And I am doing these readings in the hope that it will help to distract you from whatever else is happening in your life right now, which let's face it, some of the stuff that's happening right now is really crap. So, uh, if, you if you listened and watched the first video, I started to read uh, from the first chapter of my book and you will recall that I mentioned my grandmother sobbing hysterically throughout my wedding ceremony. I have to tell you at the time that was quite disconcerting and even though my mum said to me afterwards, you know, it's because she had a stroke and she's quite emotional, it was still like, wow, grandma's very upset about this wedding. And my grandma actually was a very intuitive woman. And many, many years later, when my marriage ultimately ended, I often thought back to myself and thought, oh, did she know where this was gonna end up? And is that one of the reasons she felt so emotional at the time? Um, just as a little side note, um, that little velvet, green velveteen chair right there behind me is actually my grandmother's. So it feels kind of appropriate that I should be sitting in this particular location and reading that excerpt to you. And the other thing too is, I've actually got this little fan here because, and this is something that women of a certain age will relate to, is uh, I'm in my late 40s now, I'm 47. And what that means is, yep, I do get the occasional hot flush, mainly because I'm not eating the correct diet, which I need to get back into. And yes, Cherry for Metabolic Balance, I can see you looking at me and I will be getting back in the swing of it shortly. But in the meantime, while I have hot flushes, I use my grandmother's fan to help cool me down. And every time I do that, it um, helps me feel connected to her in some way, even though she passed over quite a long time ago. So I, I'm sure that you all have little things that remind you of the people who you loved and who loved you who've now passed over. And I just want to let you know that during these difficult times, it's really okay and I fa in fact I think it's really beneficial to pick up those items or to hold those people in your mind and to know that they're always with you um, and that you can always call on them for strength in um, moments of anxiety and despair and all the other myriad of emotions that we're feeling right now. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading now from my book to try and distract you just for a moment or two today. You may recall, I just left off where I had told you that I had um, throat infection and two ear, inf ear infections in both ears right before my wedding. Timing, right? Or is it a sign that I wasn't uh, speaking my truth and I wasn't willing to hear it either? You be the judge. Meanwhile, although the fumes at the salon almost made me pass out and there were probably a hundred pins in my hair, the curls and sweet semicircle of flowers on top of my head was just right. The photographer arrived on time, which was good. Then we realized one of the floral lapel pins was missing. So my soon to be brother-in-law, William, had to dash back to the florist, but he made it back on time. He was quite young at the time and I, I think he probably felt quite proud of himself that he could help in that way. It was the usual chaos associated with a major family event, and I was fine, I really was, until the wedding cars arrived. They edged slowly, funeral-like, down my parents' driveway and triggered my immediate panic and a swift exit to the bathroom. Wanda, my head bridesmaid, found me there a short time later, perched on the white storage box, holding my head in my hands and rocking back and forth like a mentally deranged person. What am I doing? I can't do this. What am I doing? This is crazy. What am I doing? I can't do this. I wasn't holding it together very well. What's going on? Wanda demanded. She was a straightforward person and it seemed a fair question under the circumstances. What am I doing? I asked. I can't do this. She gave me a hard look, then said, Lucretia, do you think I'd let you do this if I didn't think it was right? And that was that. I met Wanda in my first week at university and she had a lot of common sense. She would have told me if I was doing something stupid and her perspective was enough to shake me out of my panic. Of course I was doing the right thing. 
30 minutes later, Dad was holding my hand as the car approached the new farm park, Rotunda. We didn't say much and I was calm and regally bride-like as I stepped out onto the footpath. Then my garter leapt for freedom, landing near my feet like a frilly blue and white anklet. Everyone thought that was hilarious. I can still to this day remember the sound of my auntie Brenda cackling away at the spectacle. Years later, someone told me it was bad luck if your garter fell off at the wedding, at your wedding. But I didn't know that at the time. I was just embarrassed because my perfect entrance would have involved exiting the car gracefully and gliding effortlessly up the path towards the rotunda, not fumbling around at my feet and hiking a piece of elastic back up under my skirt. <laughs> I eventually made it up the aisle and two minutes later, sorry, and minutes later, two Japanese tourists settled in to watch the ceremony from a nearby park bench. It was unnerving to have those uninvited guests studying me. What were they thinking about me? A young Australian girl in an ivory and gold satin dress with layers of chill that would later prove enticing to the colony of tiny black bugs living in the surrounding rose gardens. As the celebrant began the ceremony, I noticed the best man had tears in his eyes. So did Daniel, the groom. I was happy, but didn't cry. I felt a little detached, like I was physically present, but observing at the same time. Less than 15 minutes later, I was married to my sweetheart, Daniel. It was 10 days before my 23rd birthday. We made promises to love each other forever under a darkening sky that later erupted with torrential rain. I loved Daniel very much. He was my rock and the man everyone loved. He was a blonde, good-looking Aussie bloke, a combination of surfy and rev head with a gift for making people laugh and a talent for fixing things. He was safe, secure, loving and reliable. He was my everything. Ten years and two days after my wedding, I walked out my front door, got into my car and drove to my parents' house. I had become something different from that innocent 22-year-old girl I'd been in a relationship with Daniel for 15 years, but now I was almost 32 and suddenly single. I was naive and I didn't have a plan. It was going to be a bumpy ride. I'll stop there for today and I will see you again soon for the next step, the next part of my book. and. Uh, if you don't feel like you want to wait <laughs> to hear the next part, uh, you can actually buy The Men I've Almost Dated as print on demand or in ebook format via all the usual online bookstores like Amazon, Fishpond, etc. And obviously, as I'm an author, I would definitely encourage you to do that if you feel called to do so. Um, otherwise, I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.